Hey, this is Matt and welcome back to the channel guys where I want to talk about some very important topic using a topical minoxidil 5% in conjunction with microneedling. What we are doing with topical minoxidil, we are putting on our scalp an antihypertensive drug in a topical form. We additionally do some micro incisions with dermarolling or microneedling to make that transcutaneous absorption even more effective. There are also more important things in life than hair and that will be our overall health, the whole cardiovascular vascular system pretty much. And if you will keep watching this video, you will find out in which instances the risks is the highest and where you are the case uh, in the high risk group or not. So make sure you stay tuned. And as always, before we start, this video has been brought to you by GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. Now, topical minoxidil has been already FDA approved for more than 20 years. And since then, many, many people people have used it. There's so many studies on this treatment and it has been proven as very safe and very well tolerated medication. We can definitely agree on that. But this study actually showed that even if you apply minoxidil topically, in a concentration of 1% to 5%, some of that minoxidil, namely 1.6 to 3.9% uh, respectively, of that minoxidil will be absorbed systemically. So if we translate it to milligrams of minoxidil that will be present in the blood plasma after applying topical minoxidil, it will be from 0.6 to almost two milligrams of uh, oral minoxidil equivalent. And this is actually something that I haven't even expected myself. That might be also another reason why this study right here, which was actually a placebo controlled study observed men using minoxidil topical 5% for a period of six months and they were specifically kind of fishing for the changes in the, you know, heart health and cardiovascular issues. And although they did not find any issues with the blood pressure after six months, they found an increased resting heart rate of three to five beats per minute. And although it may be negligible to many of you guys, and obviously I'm not a cardiologist, here's the thing, three to five beat per minute increase in six months after using minoxidil, it's actually a pretty substantial increase. And this has been also shown in a recent study uh, on women who have used one milligram oral minoxidil and their resting heart rate also increased uh, after six months of using oral minoxidil. That means that not only oral minoxidil but also topical minoxidil is able to increase your resting heart rate. And we know that if we keep increasing our resting heart rate for many many years and it's going to go gradually higher and higher and higher, we have higher risk of dying of cardiovascular disease. And you may be like, yeah, whatever, I'm going to die of heart, uh, cardiovascular disease anyways, since it's the highest probability of you dying on because you live in the Western world. And this is the statistics. So yeah, heart failures, you know, highest probability of death. But on the other hand, you also want to live a longer and healthier life, right? So this is something you need to keep in mind, everybody. And obviously, if you are an athlete like Usain Bolt or Michael Phelps, and your resting heart rate is probably below 60, uh, which is very, very healthy. Probably you have more leeway and you can get away with using uh, minoxidil topical even in higher doses. I'm not suggesting it, everybody. I'm not suggesting it just theoretically. You could have afforded it and still probably your lifestyle and healthy habits would offset that increases in healthy heart, in, in resting heart rate over the years. But if you're somebody who is not that healthy, who has already predisposed conditions like heart conditions and blood pressure issues and your resting heart rate is not optimal based on this website it should be between 60 to 100 so if it's like on the higher end if it's close to 100 minoxidil use over time has a chance to keep increasing or amping up your resting heart rate over time now how does microneedling come into this what we do with microneedling we create more incisions. You know how microneedling works. I don't need to explain you. You watch my channel. So you create these thousands of micro incisions into your skin where minoxidil can penetrate the follicles better and more effective. This means also more effective transcutaneous absorption of that minoxidil. So based on the first study where it was like 
uh, up to 4% of that minoxidil applied will be transdermally absorbed. With microneedling, it can be more, but we don't know how much more. Why? Because it seems like since 1980s, uh, nobody really picked up on like minoxidil topical use and how it affects your heart. Uh, they, they didn't seem to care. So with the new research on, on microneedling and minoxidil, nobody really cared about how that improved absorption of minoxidil via microneedling before could actually negatively affect the resting heart rate. They didn't do any study on that and that's the reason why I decided to do this video because I see nobody talking about this issue and it could be an issue long term. Especially if you guys are using microneedling too often, they're using minoxidil too much, they're using it twice a day. Obviously if you use minoxidil twice a day you are not exposing yourself to 50 milligram of oral minoxidil equivalent applied topically that's the 5% minoxidil, but you're exposing yourself to a double dose of that. So you are exposing yourself to 100 mg of oral minoxidil in a topical equivalent form per day. So that's why it can have a negative effect on your resting heart rates long term. So that's something that you need to, you know, think about and definitely monitor your resting heart rate, monitor your blood pressure. If you're somebody who hasn't started with minoxidil yet, or maybe you are considering oral minoxidil, definitely monitor your blood pressure. Get that uh, blood pressure meter for home use where you can track your blood pressure at home and also your resting heart rate. Now, uh, let me come back to the study from 1985 where they actually talked about how much of an oral equivalent would you expect uh, to be absorbed uh, via that 5% topical minoxidil absorption. They actually came to a result of 2.5 to 5.4 milligrams of oral minoxidil equivalent that would be detected in your blood plasma after 5% minoxidil uh, topical application. That definitely depends on how much of that minoxidil uh, will be applied. If you apply it to the, same, to the whole skull because you are diffuse thinner, you probably apply more than one ml of that minoxidil. Also, if you apply a minoxidil twice a day, this will definitely increase that overall minoxidil load that will be absorbed um, systemically per day. And obviously by utilizing microneedling, this minoxidil load can be increased. How much will depend on the size of the needles that you're using and how frequently you are needling. It actually makes sense to even start having like a pretty uh, rational argument as to why low dose oral minoxidil wouldn't be a better alternative here. 2.2 to 5 mgs per day and maybe have even the same systemic exposure to that oral minoxidil over time. Obviously the risk of increased resting heart rate which will still be there even with low dose oral minoxidil but the whole hassle of you know having to apply minoxidil and microneedling you can avoid it pretty much because microneedling has been mainly uh, utilized for making non-responders to minoxidil topical to responders. But if you will use oral minoxidil, you don't have to be a responder or non-responder, you will just respond because it's gonna be metabolized in your liver instead of your scalp. So that was only issue. So by that, we can also bypass the non-responsiveness of many guys to minoxidil, which many people estimate on as high as 40 or 50% that every other guy is actually not responding to conventional topical 5% minoxidil. It starts making sense having the this a rational argument as to why oral minoxidil could be actually more beneficial in this case. But since it is not FDA approved, since it's already not going to be able to be patented, it's a generic medication. There is not a lot of money to be made. Uh, right now, there are only like a handful of doctors worldwide, like usually dermatologists and hair transplant doctors that I know who prescribe this oral minoxidil off label to patients for treating hair loss, uh, or they also create like a specific blend of uh, finasteride and oral minoxidil pill uh, and then um, advise this to patients. So they have like both in one pill, also DHT blocker and hair loss stimulant or hair growth stimulant like minoxidil. Now I'm definitely not advising you to take oral minoxidil, but it would make sense to look deeper into it. And if you want, I can do another video where I could take a look at some studies uh, when it comes down to safety and hair regrowth ability of topical minoxidil 5% versus different doses of oral minoxidil and maybe compare what is more effective than other. So how would I finish up this video? Well, if you are somebody who is in the higher risk group, maybe you're somebody, and again, I'm not a doctor, okay guys, but 
this is common sense. So if you're somebody who has heart, heart pressure issues, your resting heart rate is high, it's higher than it should be, and it's again, should be somewhere between 60 and 100, that's considered healthy. If we look at that range, it's also pretty um, crazy to me because 100 is like 65% more than 60, and they're both healthy. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be on the 100 like top range of that resting heart rate. Definitely already unhealthy and borderline tachycardia probably and you are already starting to develop a long-term heart issue and what you should do in such case is to exercise a lot do a lot of cardio keep your heart rate at higher rates per minute ideally 130 140 and keep it that for at least 20 to 30 minutes on a daily basis with some nice cardio like a treadmill bicycle and so on and so on or a stepper and this would be the first step how to try to you know combat uh, maybe these potential uh, bad effects of minoxidil and you can combat it with your uh, lifestyle choices and also your diet limit your exposure to minoxidil if you don't need Need, use it once a day instead of twice a day and see if you can still can keep your hair loss stable with that and also avoid using things like 10% 12 or 15% minoxidil because again they have not been shown to be more effective than 5% the research is very mixed and I know that some guys they are tempted to try uh, higher concentrations of minoxidil if 5% is not working but in such case I would much rather go to oral minoxidil than to try and bump it up to 10 to 15% because that would be an equivalent of 100 on 150 mg's of oral minoxidil and that's already pretty dangerous based on what we have seen in the study from today there can be even more oral minoxidil equivalent systemically absorbed we are that cutaneous layer and this is something you want to avoid because thus it's gonna be doing some permanent uh, resting heart rate increases to you it may not okay but uh, for some guys it can and if you're doing microneedling hey keep doing it if it's working for you but don't forget about about your heart keep tracking your blood pressure resting heart rate if you are young right now that's great you have still a lot of time to build up some decent track record of how your heart rate uh, was when you were 20 30 and so on and you can keep track of that so that's what I would suggest you guys to do and be aware of this thing because I think many doctors they don't really dig so deep into this there are older studies from 1980s who the hell reads them right and um, that's why we need to have them in mind and the reason Reason there are not many studies on microneedling and topical minoxidil and how it affects our heart that's also one concerning thing if there is not such research on it it doesn't mean there are no issues behind it potentially it just means there haven't been revealed yet okay so guys keep that in mind for all of you guys who like this video make sure to like it and support my channel comment below if you have a similar opinion on this topic or if you disagree let me know I want to know why and maybe engage with you if you are somebody who is interested in a hair transplant and you have been managing your hair loss with either finasteride, minoxidil or a conventional medication and it wasn't able to regrow your hair in a way you want it, it wasn't able to give you that next level hairline and density and frame. In such case, you should get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me where I can help you out and assist you personally with your hair transplant doctor choice, how to do it right, what are the things to avoid, what are the clinics to avoid, especially if you are traveling overseas like Turkey, what are the pitfalls and traps you can easily slip into. And if you watch more videos on this channel, you'll find out how many guys also failed with their hair transplants and didn't do the right cho choice because they didn't do the research properly. They did not know what to research. But don't worry, because in this call, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do step by step. So you are not going to do any of these bad mistakes and you can enjoy the best hair of your life and make it also the most permanent it can be. Because there are some things which many guys don't know that can make a hair transplant even more long lasting. And I want you to know all of them. So sign up for a one-on-one -on -one call with me if you want me to help you out. And I'm going to be excited to helping you out in person one-on-one. -on -one. That was it for me for this video, guys. And I'm going to see you soon in another video. Take care, everybody.